Charlie Hankey's barn, the best in the Northwest, according to according to the University of Minnesota Agriculture Department. The university students sent students to study under Mr. Hankey, as his cows produced the best and most butterfat for a pound of milk. Mr. Hankey was on the first village council in 1886, located near France Avenue on Excelsior Boulevard. Grandpa Ainsworth's home. Was, he was the first village treasurer. His son Earl was a village assessor for a number of years before becoming the fifth district county commissioner, corner of Oxford and Colorado Avenue. Notice the trees. Real young. And notice the sidewalk. It's planks. The house next door is all gone now. The Rickson home on Excelsior Boulevard on the north side, about the area where the Citizen State Bank is located, opposite Miracle Mile. Notice the front porch. Young trees there also. Didn't they call that a veranda? I always called it a porch. Notice the barn in the back. The Waddell home, located in the area of where the Pontiac car sales is located. There's another front porch. I don't know about the verandas. I think that was toward the back, wasn't it? Well, uh, I thought verandas without a railing. Could be. Porches with a railing. That could be. Notice all the windows in that house. Trees there. The Baston home, home of Ethel Baston, who was a principal in the St. Louis Park school system, and Bert Baston, who was the first All-American football player from the University of Minnesota. The Bastons farmed asparagus, as did many people in the area. Mrs. Baston paid a young chap 10 cents for one day's work picking asparagus. Good old windmill pumping the water. And notice the reservoir for water there. Ainsworth home, corner of Colorado and Oxford. A later picture, note the growth of the trees. In fact, Dutch elm disease recently destroyed them. These, you can see the difference between the first picture and this picture. It must be several years difference. We had a lot of fun in Grandpa Ainsworth's plum trees, apple trees. The row of houses, I believe these were on the north side of the street in back of the Central Community Center. I've been trying to locate uh, somebody that knows more about this picture than I do. There's Cyclone Aftermath. This is a Thompson home. And notice the people out there coming to the rescue to Mr. Thompson to help clean up the mess. And it's another of the same home. Notice the buildings in the back. This home has recently been restored. We had a historical society meeting there in April. George Hala and Sister Anne. Anne is now Mrs. Dugas, who contributed this picture, taken in front of their home in Oak Hill at about Pennsylvania Avenue. People used to come with wagons and animals to take pictures of the children. This was their livelihood. This is Mrs. Deacon Thompson. who was the owner of the home, along with her husband, Deacon Thompson. There's Deacon Thompson. The reason he's called Deacon was he was a deacon of the Congregational Church. Notice the mustache and almost a handlebar. The, deacon, the children of J.O. Jack Johnson's. Mr. Johnson was the caretaker of the Pest House located on West 31st Street 
at about number 4105. Persons with contagious and serious diseases were sent to this area from Minneapolis, as the Minneapolis hospitals would not accept such cases. That's why the family is known as the Pest House Johnson. The patients who died there were also buried in the property. Earl Ainsworth was a Sunday school superintendent for the Congregational Church. He loved children and would take them on outings. He was a great man. There's some more pictures of Earl and his brood, as he called them. Can any of those kids be identified now? I wouldn't be a bit surprised. There was a large hole at the bottom of this hill, which is the corner of Alabama and Oxford Street. This would fill with water enough so people could vote on it. It was also good for the kids to walk on the spring and get wet. That's the Freeland store in the background. And the Hall Freeland's home to the right. I can't identify the house to the left. This is the old uh, Central High School, namely St. Louis Park High School. The land was donated to the village by T.B. Walker for the high school to be built. Notice the bushes, those are peony bushes in the front. In 1927, they had white and pink peonies, and that was the 27 class um, flower. This is Fern Hill School, located on Ottawa and Minnetonka Boulevard. We were told that the early 1900s, the fire truck was housed in the basement of the southwest corner of the building. There's two large garage doors for this type. Lincoln High School. This was the first high school, then it also was a grade school. Later the village hall, and later the upper floor housed the seventh grade in 1930. The children commuted to the high school for many classes. We crossed the railroad tracks and Highway 7 without any incidents. The three large windows were removed to put in the front steps. And the small door on the right-hand side is where we used to march in to music in pairs. Northside School. This was the second Northside school where Elliott School was located. The story goes that the janitor fell asleep near the furnace and his newspaper caught fire. So ended the school. This is Brookside School in the early 20s. It now houses many community agencies, STEP being one of them, and this building has had many add-ons. This is Oak Hill School located on Quebec and Walker Street. When mentioning street names, they are current as the name changes of the streets took place in 1934 and 1935. The Historical Society has the Old Kill sign in its baggage room. It's stone. Stone. Heavy. Heavy, very heavy. This is a yearbook. This is the type of yearbook that was made until about the 1930s for the schools. High school teachers. Mr. Scott was superintendent of schools. On his left is Olga Ainsworth, who was school secretary. Mr. Mackay was principal of the high school, as well as a football coach and basketball coach. He stands to the right in the back row. He took a leave of absence during World War II. His plane was lost at sea. No trace of the plane was ever found. He went with the Red Cross. The high school orchestra, note the shapes of the instruments and compare them with the cornets, sax, and so forth of what we have today. 
They're much more slender. Girl Scout High School, the Girl Scout Troop, they had the uh, scouts instead of the grade schools like we do today. There's the St. Louis Park, Did, what does that say there? Read it. It's a Girl Scout Troop. Notice this hairstyle is not much different than what we have today. And here's the Sphinx Club. I checked with people that went to school in 1923 and 24. They stated this was a girls' social club led by the English teacher, Mrs. Moffat, who is still living in uh, Bloomington. There's the Echo staff. Notice all the women on the Echo staff. In fact, I don't see a man on it. I should say a boy, a young chap. Home working. I see Echo Spielen left, third from the left in the second row. The St. Louis Park Cooking, a school, high school cooking class, 1923-24. Notice the aprons and the head bands. And Miss Lubner is the one in the mental with the apron without the head band. She was a good cook. She was a good home ec teacher. And there they are again. And notice the stove that we had. There were gas plates. There were two people to each one of those desks, and we would split an egg in half and take the recipe. It was some fun to split the egg in half. How do you split a yolk? I don't know, but we did. And she didn't have anything on her head there either. This is the football team. In 1927, St. Louis Park won the late conference title by winning from Hopkins to the zip. Doesn't look like they had many reserves. Mr. Mackay was the coach. This is football practice in the field where the present fo football field is not. Note the homes to the right in the background. The Historical Society has written the school board requesting that the high school football field to be named in honor of Halsey Hall, a well-known sportscaster in the area. He also refereed basketball, football games for Park High. The 33 and 34, the girls' basketball team, these girls did travel from school to school to play in the Lake Conference. There they are again. This is the boys' basketball team. And another basketball team with Mr. McKay at the, as their coach. Northside School. That was early. How early was that, Marie? I don't know the year. Must have been the early 1900s. That's the Lincoln School. Uh, Grades four and five. This picture was donated by Ann Dugas. Note the old type of uh, desk there. Yeah, they were screwed to the floor. But squeaky. Yeah. The seat was attached to the desk 
and back. This is Lincoln School, class of 1912. Flo Denison, teacher. Picture was donated by the granddaughter, Diane Larson. Notice that picture of the uh, farmer and his wife praying. Notice how many school pictures have that. This is the assembly hall in 1915. Really a one large classroom and it took quite a bit to get it quiet because I can remember being in there. And notice how clear those uh, desks look there. You can see the wrought iron work. I sat in the back and I would get my hair pulled. I sat in the front and I guess you know why. <laughs> there it is, another shot of the assembly room. So thankful to these people donating these pictures of way back when. There is Gene Riley flooding the rink on what is now Highway 7 in front of the Central Community Center. Gene passed away in the fall of 1989. Note the building in the background, originally the bank building with the post office in the rear of the building. When the bank failed, the post office moved to the front of the south part of the building and the rear was used for a hamburger shop. Lefty Simonson owned it first and sold it later to Pete the Greek as he was lovingly called by his friends. He said then he knew who his friends were. The first water tower, the school children pranksters painted over the name of S A I'm sorry, Saint and made the letter a P into a B. It was something to see that when it was dismantled. There's another picture of the old Kell School. That was donated by and Hagar Dugas. There is the old waiting station. We'd come up to that's at Brown on West Lake Street and we'd wait for the uh, streetcars inside if we got there too early, especially in the winter time. And there's a sign to the back that says ice cream. And off to the left of the two women was a barber shop. That was Reese's Cafe, recently the waiting station cafe. There is the 1893 streetcar, noted as the electric line car. It went to Lake and Hennepin and back. The Interstate Commerce Commission would not let them go any further. was a TV walker, the electric line. Did that connect uh, down on Hennepin Avenue then? Then they had to come back. There is a 1938, the last streetcar at the 415 trip. There's Mr. Peterson. He let me drive the streetcar for one block. Guess who's taking the picture in the shadow there? Marie? That's right. Little did I realize that that was going to be a valuable picture. He was a very nice man. This is a hotmobile in 1913. J.N. Hovey was uh, 15 years old at the time, and he's the person in the driver's seat. Quite the class. Is the wheel steering wheel on the right-hand side of the car? Sure. Uh, I guess it is. It almost looks like it's in the middle, but I assume it's, maybe it's the right. And look at the lights. You'll see the Prestolite tank on the side for lights. Yes. This is Highway 100 looking north from Highway 7 Bridge, and it was taken by Bob Felber. Looks a little different today, doesn't it? And look at the trucks that they used then. So that'd be about 1934. 
Yes. Because we gra I graduated in 35, and we didn't have a football field then. This is a Minnehaha Creek. It's on a postcard listing in St. Louis Park Beauties. Notice no handrail on the footbridge. There was no date on the chart postcard either. A lot of water in there. Mm -hmm. This is a Minnehaha Creek again in the vicinity of Skunk Hollow where the Oxford Business District is now located. called it Skunk Hollow because there were some skunks that got in the basement of the two homes that were down there and they really had a good time. There's plenty of them still left on the highways today. Raccoons are coming in now mm -hmm. too. There's the Minneapolis and St. Louis Railroad Depot in the early 20s. St. Louis Park received its name from this railroad. The railroad was aiming for the city of St. Louis but never made it that far. Their founding fathers offered to build a depot or railroad station if our city fathers would name the town after the railroad. And there is a book on this, and I am trying to locate it, but I have not been successful. This is an early picture of the Union Congregational Church at 37th and Alabama. We'd practice downstairs on Sunday morning and then come around and go up the steps and process to the back, from the back. There was no inside stairway? No. This is a Methodist church at Brown on West Lake Street, north of what is, was Reese's Restaurant. It was struck during the 1925 tornado. Somebody out in St. Louis Park in the vicinity has the bell from this church, and I would like if they would contact the Historical Society just so we could know where it is. The old saloon, the 1925 tornado passed through it, located at the area on West Lake Street and Brownlow Avenue, just northwest of where Reese's Restaurant was. That tornado really did a lot of damage. I don't remember of anybody being injured in that. Notice the purity, that of the milk. Notice that up there. Creosote plant after the June 25th, 1925 tornado. Looks like they could use some tree trimming or grass trimming down there too. There is a uh, the north side of Walker Street at the railroad tracks, Doc Brown's Barbershop to the left of the Swinson Rudin Meat Market to the right. You can see that was a tornado, 25th, 1925. Those were all blown out windows above us. And notice how it was every other one. The one down at the bottom, the top one, and then the next one completely out, and then the bottom, and then the top. This is a Highway 7 marker. I don't mean Maria Hardman. <laughs> She's just there smiling. She's out on a little walk. Notice the Hamilton block in the back background, oh, the brick block. To the left there. Mm -hmm. That's where the IOF, the Odd Fellows, and Rebecca's met, as did the uh, Eastern Star and the Masons. The dam, patch tracks, like we used to call it, dam mm -hmm. patch. Pan patch. This is the east end of the brick block. This section of the building housed church meetings on Sunday evenings. Only Larson's funeral was held the day that this picture was taken. Note the white funeral hearse. This section of the brick block was used to house the seventh grades in 1931 and 32 as St. Louis Park was growing. That was a fancy hearse. 
The old hotel, known as the Hinkle T Hotel, where many of the men who worked at the Monitor Drill lived, is in the background. That's the building to the right, and then the building to the left was a store, and up above was apartments. And then Pocket Lumber Company's buildings to the left. And that's where Brunswick would cross the railroad tracks. Notice the type of telephone poles. You can see that it was just a road. There it is again, taken from the corner of 37th and Colorado. That tree in the foreground is no longer there. This is the first bank, 1915. It failed in 1918. Because the post office was in the rear. You can see they were cleaning up with the ladder in there, inside. Notice the fancy scroll. There's Mom Hartman. And in the background is the uh, ice cream socials bandstand. <coughs> Excuse me, they were held on Friday evenings, and the Fireman's Carnival was held in mid-August on a Saturday evening. Band concerts accompanied the ice cream socials. Each church had a Friday night to supply the goodies for sale. That was where you'd come and meet your friends that you hadn't seen for a long time. There's a brick lot, the IOF Hall. That's where Minnesota River was started, outside of the, the starting in the basement of the home. Were they in that building? Yeah. There's Trinkley's store, which later became, which later became about Hamilton's store. Look at the barrels of apples. Must be. And look at the bushel basket. That picture doesn't show the tin ceiling very well. This is uh, Doc Brown's barbershop, which was owned once by Frank Warner. How many pool tables do they have there? Three? It looks like there's mm. three. That's behind the barbershop, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were all be decked out for a Fourth of July celebration. There's the Fern Hill grocery store located on West Lake Street, just east of the old Fern Hill School. That's not a horse, that's a donkey, isn't it? Well, can't see its ears too clear, so I couldn't tell you. It's the only way I could tell is by the ears. And look at the milk wagon. There has to be two animals there, because notice all the legs. That's right. It's a pair of horse. Look and there it is in, and look at the snow. And he had snow on those days. There's another one taken also in the wintertime. Oh, what building is that just to the right in, in the back there? That's the home that was down um, where it sloped, began the slope. And there it is again. That was Mr. Carpenter's home. This is the streetcar boat on Lake Minnetonka was very popular back in the early 1900s. That was submitted by John Magnuson. Notice the tie on the child. This is uh, a private yard on 31st in Florida looking north to Minnetonka Boulevard in 1926. The name of the street was Milton. It's a typical home. Note the uh, sculptured building blocks for the foundation. I wonder 
which one of those boys is John Magnuson? This is the other. That's that John Magnuson there hiding behind the bushes. Looks like it. In front of his home on 31st in Florida. This was 1924, 1925. We took that picture. Nobody realized how valuable they are, are today. Is this? That must be John. That looks like could be John from the other side. His new wagon, solid wheels and rubber tires, first class. There's a fireman carnival at 37th and Brunswick South, the old Central Park, the clowns in the parade in 1914, and notice the small trees. And that's uh, West 37th going west. There's July 4th picnic 1909. Notice how people are dressed. Look at the children. The white clothes and the hat, black socks, stockings. Is that a temporary tent there, or is that permanent? No, that was temporary. And here's another picture of the 1909 picnic. Notice the elevator in the background. No, those are homes in the background. There's an elevator back there someplace. This was located about the area where Central Community Center is now. Barns in the background, too. There is the elevator. Which one is that? That was the old black one. The standard elevator was the uh, light colored one that was just torn down. <coughs> Notice the size of the bike. There's the uh, July 4th, 1912 parade. The Golden Green Belt Deer sign was on the, uh, what used to be the old fire station. There we have some more pictures getting ready for the parade. It looks like it's in front of the lumber yard. It looks like it's down at the creosote plant. And there the horses are walking on Dakota going north. That's the Woodman Circle float in 1932. Look at the fancy plants or whatever they have on top. There's the 1928 fire truck. This parade is going on north on Dakota at Walker Street. This fire truck is still in service and the firemen do a magnificent job in maintaining this truck in A1 condition. Still in? Still at fire station number one on Wooddale. There the band stamp was completed. July 4th, 1914 celebration. They were all bedecked. There's the St. Louis Park Fire Department, Police Department, Water Department, all in the old fire barn. And there's our firemen, volunteers. 
in the summertime they take the uh, tr fire trucks out and the kids would all play or the band would practice in the fire barn. There is an extension of the firemen. They were all volunteers. They would get paid three dollars for a fire, but they wouldn't get it till the end of the year. Three dollars each. Three dollars a fire each. Mm -hmm. There are the fancy fire trucks that we had in them their days. In front of the fire barn. We didn't call it the fire station, it was a fire barn. And there's the St. Louis Park Businessmen's Club and notice the two women in the middle in the front row. These are people who sold World War I bonds. And this is in the St. Louis Park High School, which is on Walker Street. Taken in the gymnasium, people on the stage and in front of the stage, and they were sitting on the floor. Note the stage drops. There were several designs which could be used by dropping them from the ceiling. That's where all our class plays were given. Right. That one was a Venice Cafe. Uh, Canal. There is the baseball team, the village team. We played Sunday baseball against teams from Hopkins, Champlin, and other towns. That was a big deal to go up there and watch those fellows play. What, they're 10, 10 there? They evidently didn't have any substitutes. There is a monitor drill pamphlet, Manufactured Farm Machinery, a division of the Moline Plow Company from Horkin, Wisconsin. The plant which was located where the National Lead Plant was, is, or was, was burned in 1930 or 31, and what was left moved to Hopkins and combined with the Minneapolis Threshing Machine Company. This was the formation of the Minneapolis Plow Company. The merger of the Minneapolis Steel Machinery Company, along with the monitor drill, molding plow, and the Minneapolis Threshing Machine Company constituted the Minneapolis Moline Company. I don't understand why they put it Minneapolis, Minnesota, because this was St. Louis Park, is where they were located. Sort of like the post office today. We are Minneapolis, 16 or 26. But if you notice that if your insur car insurance is listed at St. Louis Park, you get cheaper rate. If it's listed Minneapolis, you're paying the Minneapolis rate. So it'd be wise for people to check their insurance to see how it's listed. This company was a major employer of the St. Louis Park and the vicinity. There we are again. There's some more. It'd be nice to find out the names of the people, but it probably is too late. I don't know where you'd go to find out. <laughs> there is the uh, monitor drill salesman and the officials, and notice the two ladies in the front were office gals. I think one of them is uh, Harriet Simonson, who was Harriet Williams, lovingly known as Hattie. I'm sure glad the factories today take more pride in the exterior of their buildings than they did in the past. Yeah. There's a Thanksgiving ball, Fireman's Annual. Notice a couple of the admission for 75 cents. Little Johnny's Orchestra. I wonder who Little Johnny was. I can remember Hoopy John. Yeah. Hoopy John got his name by, he used to play waiting for the um, band to come. And uh, 
then they, when he came in, they'd say, Whoopi, here comes John. How about that? This is Klein's Food Market located on Dakota and Minnetonka Boulevard. It's now the location of Beak's Pizza. That was one of the first grocery stores on Minnetonka Boulevard west of Lake Street. That was important for us because we was only a block and a half away from there. This is Lake Street and Minnetonka Boulevard. Note the roller garden in the background. It was built for a horse riding academy and, sta and stables. And then the sign, please don't drive into the fill station unless you plan to purchase gasoline. This is another lake in Minnetonka Boulevard where the yeah. quick store Park Quick is now located. Another one, Lake and Minnetonka Boulevard in the Minneapolis Tribune box. Note the price of the paper is five cents. This is looking west on Minnetonka Boulevard. And it's west and going west, west on Lake, Lake Street. Street. West of Lake Street. There is the morning paper. Oh. Sign for five cents. I was looking for it, but <laughs> couldn't see it either. So, the bargain. Are they thirty-five cents now? No, we buy prepaid, which is good. But it still comes out to thirty-five cents. We never divide it out. <laughs> That's Minnetonka Boulevard about Inglewood. No, that's, no, that's, that's Lake where Street. Lake Street and Minnetonka Boulevard intersect. Yeah. And I think it's looking east. And that used to be Jerry Shell Station over there, where it's now is Rogers. That must be a, sort of a recent picture because it's got a divided highway in there. The right turn is on the to the right. And there is Minnetonka Boulevard at Englewood, looking west. There's a, is that the, uh, I don't know what, that's uh, a um, bakery truck. Mm -hmm. That's down by France Avenue, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's why I say Englewood about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was the name of that store that Nitke used to run down there? That was on the south side of right. uh, Minnetonka Boulevard. There is the Engel Dairy in the home. It was believed to be the first St. Louis Park Dairy Company in many years, located on Excelsior Boulevard, just east of the present Citizen State Bank. This is about 1954. They made home deliveries. It was a family-owned business. Here's a pure oil station on France and Excelsior Boulevard. This was taken in 1954. At that time, it was owned by Sidney Brown, who lived on Natchez Avenue. This is Minnehaha Golf. Meadowbrook no, Golf. No, Meadowbrook Golf Course. Flooded by the Minnehaha Creek. This was taken from the footbridge in the golf course by Marie Hartman. That was about 1951, if I remember correctly. Did that kill all the grass or did it go down quick enough? It went, no, it was there for quite some time. Here's another view of the backwaters of the Minnehaha Creek. Note the Meadowbrook apartments in the background on the right. My neighbor used to go down to the on the railroad tracks down to Skunk Hollow and fish bullheads during that flooded area, flooded time.
And this is the Bronx Park, located at 29th in Jersey. The children are playing softball. This was taken in 1955. Note all the homes that was built in there by Adolf Fine. They really came up like mushrooms right after the war. The fire department noticed the Lincoln School building in the back, the, which was a, a village hall. It is now the home of the Minnesota Aquadium Corporation. We still called it the Lincoln School, even though it was a village hall. Which has since been torn down. Yes. There you go. There's the depot. That's the Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Paul, and Pacific Railroad Station. As it looks today. As it looks today without the tree that was taken by um, Dutch Elm disease.